Two of the render engines that are popular nowadays are VRA and Cycles. It is true that they are both useful and powerful, but each one of them has specific and different features. That's why we will make a comparison between the two engines to help you pick the best one for your particular project's needs. The user interface. V-Ray's interface is clean and quite simple. You can find different toolbars, and each one of them includes several other toolbars with simple shortcuts to some of the most commonly used V-Ray functions. You can also find the frame buffer that contains a variety of additional rendering tools. The V-Ray Color Picker is a color manager that allows numeric color value selections in screen and rendering color spaces. Besides all this, a file manager allows you to manage the entirety of your scene records in single shots. In addition to the ability to set file paths, create scene archives, and monitor resources like textures, IS files, and proxy objects. On the other hand, Cycle's interface is also clean and user-friendly. It has some simple settings for quick renders, but if you want control over the results, you can dive deeper. Blender's material system is node-based, which allows for more freedom compared to what you can find in V-Ray initially. Almost every node contains plenty of options, and even more in the properties menus. The rendering speed. Rendering speed is considered one of the main criteria that designers and artists pay attention to before picking their render engine. V-Ray comes with a huge pile stock of menu settings, and these different settings enable us to diminish the delivery time while preserving high quality renders. Along these lines, V-Ray rendering is biased, and it takes the leadership when it comes to this. On the other hand, Cycles is an unbiased path tracing engine created for animation, which means it creates an image by tracing the path of rays throughout the scene. Cycles can be quick, competitively quick, but you need to know how to tweak the settings to get the most out of it. In the words of the developer Thomas Dinges, the internal rendering engine was made for speed, but if you want realism, you have to turn stuff on, which means more time. Despite the differences in pace between these two rendering engines, both have outstanding speed and performance. This makes it troublesome in this category to say which one is better over the other completely. Also, V-Ray performs flawlessly in the biased mode, while Cycles is very good in the unbiased mode. Both render engines match each other up in terms of speed and interface efficiency. But since V-Ray is an older engine with a whole company behind it, you will have more advantages using it. The Render Settings as a beginner, render settings can seem considerably intimidating as there are many tabs and menus. Cycles render settings are found in the Properties panel if you click on the Render tab, which means that each one may require specific settings to get the best results, and you can easily find ready examples in forms. But it is always better to play around and test things for yourself, especially in the early stages. On the other hand, V-Ray contains way more options, but you can customize it for almost any scene if you know how to play around with the most important settings. Its render settings window hosts many settings for both V-Ray and V-Ray RT, and these settings allow you to have a higher degree of freedom and you can change them anytime to get a different result. Also, you can find ready rendering settings examples in forums or even in the Kaios platform. Blender's materials are generally made of distinct elements named shaders. They can be combined to build even more complex services or volume shaders. And Cycles allows you to exercise using materials without spending a lot of time learning how to create them yourself, which is difficult to do as a newcomer. And to make things easier for yourself, you can use pre-made ones. There are many types of materials such as glass, wood, stone, etc. These all can be used with a simple drag and drop, and you can use three different categories. First, surface shaders. A surface shader defines like iteration at the surface of the mesh. Secondly, a volume shader. When the surface shader doesn't reflect or receive light, it enters the volume. If no volume shader is specified, it will pass straight through or it can be refracted to another side of the mesh. And there is also displacement shaders where the shape of the surface can be modified by the displacement shaders. On the other hand, V-Ray actually does come with its ready-to-use library. But you can find a wide range of them ready to download for free or you can use the ones you can find on forums or specialized materials websites. If you want to tweak any material or create your own, you can do this using traditional settings or you can use the node-based system to work more freely, especially when things get complicated. Real-time rendering capabilities. Rendering can be split into two main sorts, real-time rendering and offline rendering. Real-time rendering is often used in 3D video games, ArcVis, and so on, and generally, each frame has to be rendered in a few milliseconds. 
Offline rendering is used to create realistic images and movies, where each frame can take hours or days to complete. In theory, we cannot consider real-time completely real-time, because it is just a fast preview, and what it represents is not the final render quality. So, to simplify it and make it clear, this feature simply denoises the render to give the user almost real-time preview. Besides Cycles, Blender also has a render engine known as EV for real-time rendering, so basically Cycles does not have any real-time features. When it comes to V-Ray, it has V-Ray RT, which allows you to have an almost real-time preview of your scene without having to render each frame each time. You can move the camera angle, change objects, lighting, materials, etc., and they automatically update within your viewport. V-Ray RT is good and getting better every year, but EV is also a great real-time render engine that really changed how people look at Blender now as a 3D package. And it is a fantastic choice and an amazing alternative for the other render engines, especially knowing that Blender is free. CPU and GPU rendering V-Ray can compute rendering in both CPU and GPU setups. Moreover, when it comes to hybrid rendering, V-Ray can intuitively render files on CPU and GPU systems simultaneously. Like V-Ray, Cycle supports CPU and GPU rendering as well, which is used to accelerate render times. There are three GPU rendering modes, CUDA which is preferred for older NVIDIA cards, Optics which utilizes the hardware ray tracing abilities of NVIDIA's Turing architecture and Ampere architecture, and OpenCL which supports rendering on AMD graphic cards. Multiple GPUs are also supported if you want to take your render to the next level, but having multiple GPUs does not expand the available memory because each GPU can access only its memory. Industries that use Cycles and V-Ray In terms of using it in the industry, Cycles is used but not as widely as V-Ray. It tends to be more often used by freelancers and small studios, so in this sense, it is used in the industry but it is not industry standard, at least not yet. Its use includes animation, architecture, interior design, motion design, and product design. On the other hand, V-Ray is used by many professionals and studios in many industries such as architecture, interior design, filmmaking, the video game industry, and more. Furthermore, it is used by large studios producing Hollywood films. For example, Marvel's Avengers Infinity War and Game of Thrones both used V-Ray. 3D Software Integration Cycles is natively integrated into Blender, in addition to Rhino and Poser, which uses a tweaked version of the engine. It can be used on Linux, Windows, and Mac. V-Ray, on the other hand, is available for 3DS Max, Cinema 4D, SketchUp, Revit, Maya, Unreal Engine, and a host of other software. It also has a V-Ray standalone application, and it can be used on Windows and Linux. The Learning Curve V-Ray gives the users a choice to set their own limits and figure out what output is required for the final render. If you are focusing on photorealism, V-Ray is the right decision, and in this case, you should know the basics and principles of photorealism to be good at it. But if you want to just understand the basics of rendering, for the most part, it will take you around one week to learn V-Ray's main tools. On the other hand, Cycles is pretty well known for being one of the easiest rendering software to learn. It offers some great tools for different purposes, and it is especially good for animation, so it is worth it to get through the initial learning phase. Pricing The average monthly price for V-Ray is $80, and the V-Ray license is $99 per year. When it comes to Cycles, it comes with Blender, which is completely free. So as you can see, Cycles is more affordable than V-Ray, which is very advantageous if you are a hobbyist or just starting fresh. Final thoughts. In general, V-Ray is much mature than Cycles and therefore has more options and more potential. Also, the render settings and speed can be higher when using V-Ray, but if you are using Blender, Cycles is a great choice nonetheless. If you are just a hobbyist or someone who is starting fresh in the field, you may prefer to not spend money on V-Ray as it is quite expensive. Thus, Cycles is a great choice as a render engine and, to be honest, the difference between them is not that huge anyways. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, you can leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.